Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel, Bass Brothers Fishing DMV. Hopefully you guys are starting to get out there, starting to get out there, do some fishing, getting on your boats, kayaks, whatever you have out there. Big shout out to everyone who's supported the channel so far. The channel is continuing to grow and it's all because of you guys out there. Thank you, means a lot to us. Hopefully you'll continue to enjoy what we have in store. 2021 is shaping up to be a awesome year. Got some cool things in store. Excited to bring this cool video to you today and also announce the winner to the TB Nation gift card giveaway. I got the giveaway announcement for the winner at the end of this video. So watch this video till the end to see who gets the moolah. All right, before we get started today, I gotta give a shout out to Warren at Way of Fishing. I was randomly just watching one of his videos and stumbled across a life-saving piece of information. It's winter time. I've been freezing my tail off in this garage. I mean, bad. I'm working on the boat. My nose is running. My hands are cold. My feet are frozen. And he mentioned in his video arbitrarily that he's running a kerosene heater. I've been trying to figure out how to heat this garage. Went through a bunch of options that I won't even begin to tell you guys about. Some cost 500, some cost a thousand dollars to put in. Wasn't quite feeling that. And Warren just mentioned that he was running a kerosene heater. And I looked into it. As a result, I found this guy right here. And that is truly a lifesaver. You never know what you get out of these videos when you watch them. I wasn't even watching for that, but man, lifesaver. Shout out to Warren from Way of Fishing. I'm warm, I'm toasty. I'll be in a t-shirt in a little bit and it's 27 degrees outside right now. So maybe someone else out there can benefit from this information. I know I am. This video is all about running conduit for electrical wiring. So when you're doing a build like this and you have a lot of electronics going on, you'll need to run wires from the back of the boat to the front or vice versa. And there won't always be a way to do that. And you have to pretty much figure out how to do that on your own. The only tube I've used in the past is PVC conduit tubing, which is a little heavy. And again, this is a super light build. So I'm going with the lightest option that I know about. And what I'm going with are golf tubes. I wanna give a shout out to Michael Lopez. I got this idea from him, TB Nation, shout out to them. I've never used this before, but this is very attractive. And the main reason is the golf tubes are extremely light. I mean, this thing is in the ounces category and maybe one ounce, I don't know. It's very lightweight. I'm going with an inch and a quarter. And how I'm gonna do this is drill through the middle bench and the rear bench. And I'll be installing the tube right in here. Switch panel will be right here. Fuse box bus bar combo will be right here. So this will be the hub for the wiring. So I need to be able to get anything up here wired to that hub and anything from the rear wired to the hub as well. And I'll be cutting through the rear bench to do the same thing. The tubing coming from the rear of the boat will come through. Let me try to just do a slight illustration. The tubing will go through the bench right along the side of this wall. This is exactly how I want it to go. Of course, I'm gonna wall this off. So everything will be hidden behind a wall right here. The goal is to keep this as close to the side of the boat as possible, maximizing as much space in the main part of the boat right here. And this is why I'm doing this video. I wanna introduce this on the channel as an option for boat builders out there. I think this will work out really well. We're gonna put it to the test and see. All wires will be able to run, be run through this size too will be a breeze once this is in place. So originally I picked up just one and I got it off of Amazon and then realized I needed two more and Amazon delivery isn't gonna cut it for me. So I got online and realized of all places, Dick sells these and they have them in, in stock in some of the stores. So I ran out to Dick's and grabbed a couple more. I will say it's cheaper on Amazon, so plan ahead and order them from Amazon. So this will be a good test to see if golf tubes are really a great option. Can't wait to see, let's get started. I'll be using a hole saw to drill into the benches to make the holes. One thing you always have to consider when drilling holes for tubing is you have to account for not only the size of the opening of the tube, but the actual thickness of the tube as well. For a normal PVC pipe, normally equates to about a quarter of an inch difference. So if you have, let's say one inch tubing, you'd need an inch and a quarter hole saw. In this case, I'm, it's about half of that with these golf tubes. This is about 1 16th on each side. So you add it up, that's an eighth of an inch. This is an inch and a quarter tubing, which means you need an inch and three eighths hole saw. I remember making that mistake when I did my boat. I bought the exact same size hole saw that was my tube and it was too small. I'm gonna mark my holes. Make sure everything lines up nicely, front and rear. I've got my hole marked out. X marks the spot. Now we get into the foam. There we go. 
foam pops out just like that. So right now I'm just measuring the distance to the hole from the side of the boat. I'm gonna measure that same distance on the other side of this bench. I'm looking at an inch and a half. The distance from here to here is an inch and a half. The distance from the hole to the top of the bench is roughly two inches. So I'm gonna measure from here to here on the other side of the bench and from here down to get to the top of the hole. And I'll mark the same location on the other side of the bench that I have over here. All right, I got the other side drilled out. Now I'm gonna take my spade drill and try to drill all the way through. So I'm just putting a bunch of these together right here, trying to make my own extension. I got three of these little extenders. All right, how about that? This is my poor man extension tool right here. All right, let's see how good this works. That feels pretty good. I think I broke through. All right, let's get this out. There you go, guys. My budget drill bit extension actually worked. I'm gonna try to get the GoPro in the right place. You can see that I drilled all the way through. It looks like I got a little bit of shaving that I could do to clean it up a little bit. But I'm gonna try to use the tube to push the rest of that stuff through. Again, this is really thin tubing, so I don't know how well it will do. When I did my, when I use PVC pipes, it could push through pretty well. Oh, there you go. I think that is it. Let's give you a shot from the other side. There you go. All right, got it. Got it through. That is perfect. That's a nice little lip too. I like that a lot. All right, so there you have it. We have a perfect inch and a quarter tube going through. That is a lot of space to be able to run my conduit. I'm actually very excited about this. This will be a lot easier than previous build running wires. All right, I'm pretty excited, very happy success. The most nerve wracking part is just trying to make sure you have the hole lined up on either side of the bench. And I was able to do that. Just did a simple measurement and also just eyeballed it to make sure that it looked right. But that looks awesome, guys. Look at that. This is gonna work out really well. If you think it's hard to do it the first time, it's always harder to do it twice because you gotta keep the same level of patience and diligence. Oftentimes you'll do it right the first time and say, hey, I got it and kind of rush through it on the second time and then screw up. So I'm gonna take a couple deep breaths, get my head back in the game real quick, start over and do this side, run the tube through and test it out with a few wires. Let's go. I don't have a point of reference of any kind of framing in front of this bench to mark my hole off of. I'll have angle aluminum going along, creating the base of the wall right here. So this needs to be on the inside of this lip right here. And I did accomplish that. If I put it right here, this would sit right like this. Looks like I have about three quarters of an inch gap between the aluminum and this tube. So that's gonna work out pretty good. I think I can go ahead and drill right where I'm at right now. And the measurements are pretty close to what they are up front, two inches up top and an inch and a half down bottom. Yeah, I think I'm good. Just like I did on the other side, I am going to mark center hole using the hole saw, the inner hole of the hole saw. Just like that. See my handy dandy circles. Now I wanna go ahead and get this tube through here. I've got a GoPro on the other side that will show, hopefully show it come through. go and we're through so this side I'm gonna leave sticking out just a little bit all right that worked out really good happy about that mission complete I got just enough tube sticking out so that the tube won't fall back in or shift around or anything and then coming over to this side of the rear bench comes on out to here I'm gonna cut off the lip of the tube right here and then attach another piece of this tubing to it right here and it will extend all the way from the rear bench up to this hatch area right here where the switch panel and bus bar fuse box combo will be located last thing I want to do is just run a wire through it why not test it out see how easy it is try to uh, have a little feel-good moment here so just fish the wire through fish the wire through and it comes right out look at that very easy all right 
I definitely can see why Michael Lopez uses this stuff. This worked out really well. Number one thing is extremely lightweight. And what I found out through the installation is it's really flexible and it has some give where other PVC pipes have a little bit of give depending on which one you buy. And some don't have any give at all. So you can't bend it, twist it and all of that where these golf tubes can be manipulated a lot easier and fit how you need it to fit. So I am a fan, I am a fan. I'm really glad I tried this out. In the end, I, I may have added an ounce of weight to the boat and that's awesome. So yeah, this stuff is a hit. I will leave it linked in the description below as always. Yeah, I think I'll incorporate these in future builds wherever I can. So again, this will serve as the main conduit for the wiring for the boat, both for the mods I'm doing now and any future mods that may come up. To join the two golf tubes together, I'm gonna go with good old fashioned duct tape. I just need it to be held together just enough for wires to be able to go through here. And of course, duct tape will work perfectly for that. I'll get a good wrap around it. And then I'll secure it to the back of this angle aluminum right here. And I've got some C-clamps just laying around that I used on my boat. I'm gonna use this clamp. This is a one inch C-clamp. actually fits perfectly around this inch and a quarter tube. And I'm gonna secure it. So this thing will not move or shift as this boat's being used. I use self-tapping screws screw it right into this angle aluminum unfortunately i'm gonna have to take this off to be able to do that i can't access it from this side so i'm gonna drill these out secure this onto here and then get the tube secured to each other i'll show you what it looks like in the end but this is going to be awesome this thing is working out really well so i pre-drilled the holes just to make it easier for me to screw them in these are self-tapping screws All right, so it's all done. I've got the C-clamp back there, holding that in place perfectly. The duct tape looked like it's gonna hold up really well. I put three, three layers on right there. And I'll probably install a vertical piece of angle aluminum right here and secure this as well there. Now we'll see. All in all, it's gonna be very secure and I'll be able to run wire through that all day long. For this mod, all wires from the front We'll go through here and come out in the middle and, and likewise for the rear, all the wires from the rear will come through here into this box. But again, for any future mods that may come up and you need to run a wire from front to back, you can easily get the wire to pass straight through that gap and continue to the rear of the boat. There you have it. This was an awesome addition to the boat build. Wanted to try it out for myself and guys, I agree. Awesome material so far, no issues, very lightweight. And man, I shoved so many wires through that thing easily versus my boat where I used a half inch conduit tube and I was pushing as many wires as I could through that. That took a much longer process, but with this right through, done. Highly recommended. Links in the description below for easy access to the materials used, including those exact golf tubes. Shout out to Nate from Nate's Custom Boats and also TB Nation for sponsoring this giveaway. As always, I use a random comment picker to pick the winner of this giveaway. So let's get into it. Drum roll. And the winner is Nick Swanson. Nick, you're the winner, congratulations. Shoot me your information. All the information is below. Send me an email so I can get this gift card to you. Nick Swanson is the winner. Now we get into the electronic portion of this build process. So those are the next upcoming videos to be posted on the channel. We've got the Elco motor installed, all electric motor, as well as all the LEDs installed in this boat. We've got the nav lights, deck lights, hatch lights, also the bilge pump, battery installed, the whole nine yards, guys. About to post that on the channel, so stay tuned to that. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Leave a comment and a like on this video if you got something out of it. Don't forget also check us out on Instagram and Facebook. I post a lot of content on there way before it even hits YouTube. So if you ever wanna know, hey, what's going on with Bass Brothers? check IG or Facebook as well. We got the full playlist link below to this John Bolt build right behind me, the Illumicraft 1232. We're gonna keep this thing rolling as always. Stay safe out there. We'll see you on the next video.